All right, this is my Yanmar 3HM35F engine, diesel engine. I'm going to be going over the uh, starting circuit, particularly the, in, uh, the addition of a starting solenoid, but I'm going to start basically where the battery attaches. Um, in this frame, you can actually see that I have a battery attachment point here and a battery attachment point here. This goes basically to the ground of the engine. You can see I've got a couple of ground points here and here. And then also over here, I got a couple of power taps coming off. Now, without a solenoid, normally all you would end up having to do is apply power from this terminal on the back side of the starting relay or the starting solenoid to this terminal here. You'd cross those two contacts and it's going to close in the relay. The relay is going to actually feel uh, power here and it's going to be transmitted through the ground of the engine, the chassis of the engine. And that's going to energize the coil. It's going to communicate this power here to, it's going to actually make up inside the, this is both a solenoid, a pull in solenoid, and a relay basically. It's going to make up. Uh, the start circuit here for the starter once it pulls in. So you're, you're really doing two things. It's a switch and it's a solenoid to pull in the throw out um, gear on the flywheel. So uh, what you do to, in, to decrease the starting current across these terminals, because if you put a switch here and here, that'll work. You can put a switch across those two terminals, but your switch is going to be carrying basically whatever the the pull-in current for the solenoid is, and you don't really want that. It's I measured it's it's about an amp, maybe it, maybe upwards of a. It's a couple amps. It's not that bad, but it can burn your contacts pretty quick. So you put in one of these guys over here. This is a starting solenoid, and you can get the waterproof marine ones, or you can just get your regular automotive ones. This one happens to be automotive. So what we've done is we've actually taken power run it off and it runs over here to the one side of the solenoid and when the solenoid closes in it actually passes power from this terminal to this terminal and then back over here completes the circuit. Uh, in order to close that solenoid in as I mentioned I have a ground point here which runs up to this. I have a switch terminal here this is going to be power. This is typically off, but you'll also see I have a power terminal coming here. So this runs off to your switch. In this case, it runs off to the control panel. So I have power going to the switch, power coming back from the switch. And when power is made up to this terminal, it completes, it energizes the coil inside, goes to ground. What that's actually doing, the, the coil is closing in the, the relay and it's connecting power from here to here which then comes down and applies power here. Now, this is the top terminal on the, um, on the starter. There's another terminal down here. This is where the battery comes in. And then what's not really clear is back underneath, there's a third terminal. And this is what's actually getting closed in, in addition to energizing this solenoid and pulling in the throw out you're also jumping power from here to here into the starter. That's where your brushes are getting start, uh, start power and it's all getting commutated uh, to, to drive the starter motor. And as you can see, that's a pretty good size. That's a pretty beefy, uh, beefy starter. It's not your standard uh, little Corolla starter. So it does draw some current. If you don't have a start solenoid, you might want to consider one. Now, a uh, question that I've, I'm trying to answer here too is if you wanted to put a local start circuit on this engine, what you could do is actually put a switch between these two terminals. These are the two side terminals. Bear in mind this, when the solenoid's closed, is a straight through connection. So you could make this the power terminal and this, this the line terminal and this the load terminal. You can make this the load terminal and this the line terminal. It doesn't matter, they're, they're really universal, but once you establish that this is where the power is coming in, or once I establish this is where the power is coming in, that's, that's what we're sticking to. Now, to get power here, 
I've got a remote switch. All I'd have to do is put a local switch right here. Some guys, some old timers, what they'll do, and you can do it in a pinch, you can actually take a screwdriver and lay it right across those two terminals. And you'll get a little spark, but it'll close it. It'll, it'll probably startle you more than anything. You take your solenoid, you take your screwdriver, lay them across those terminals. It closes in the solenoid and start, tries to start the engine. Quick, easy, effective. Thanks for watching.